Hey everybody, welcome back to another Stoneface Reactions. I'm Griffin, that's Theta, and we are watching another Tokyo 24th Ward, where last time, uh, they're gonna take down the system, they're gonna hack the power, and stuff like that. Do you remember what exactly happened last episode? Uh, it's fallen out of my brain. <laughs> I remember, uh, a lot of... Oh, right. Uh... We went back to the past, we saw how uh, the past friend group formed, how it gently mirrors like the new friend group that's happening right now, and how things led to the current moment of like the entire uh, system being created, and uh, how the body got there. Yep, and how insane our artist terrorist leader is. Um... Actually, he's less insane than I thought. He, he definitely was ranting insane to Red, but in the flashbacks, he's as completely justified in what he's proposing as he goes along. Well, he's not justified at all. I want to point that out, that domestic right. terrorism he, is not justified ever. He knows this big computer needs a human brain and body, and he told his friend... Don't you do it. And then his friend goes, I swear I won't. And ten minutes later turns around and goes, All right, I put the body in. And uh Zero goes, You did it. I I told you not to. I hate you. I'm going to stop this. Yeah, okay, I want to break down this facet, which didn't occur to me just just this moment, but is applicable. Sure. Um sure. She's dead. Her body is now property of the state. He also, despite being her father, represents the state in that he's the governing uh, force behind the entire city. So, yeah, there's technically nothing legally stopping him. Yeah, the, the one with the entire authority to do everything the that he's done legally is him. So he hasn't broken any laws or rules or anything like that. Right, but uh, the point being is that it's bad and he shouldn't be doing it and his friends told him not to. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 which doesn't make... I'm saying that doesn't have yeah, any doesn't. actual weight. It's like, I told you not to do this thing that you have the full authority to do. Invested in you by the people who <laughs> gave you authority. Not authority that you took, by the way. Authority that was elected to you. So I'm, I'm not sure the people specifically gave him the authority to take a human body and put it in a computer. I don't think anyone particularly signed off on that. I think that's just a silly externality. <laughs> It is, but it is but also so, an authority the, that he was given via the process. E even so, the, the law itself is not the basis or justification for morality here. He literally was told by his friends, don't you do it. I'm saying, though, <laughs> that I still his, find it hilarious. his friends <laughs> aren't the end-all, be-all of what he can and cannot do. Um, also, right, right. the insanity that I'm mentioning again was <laughs> a self-driving car had to be oh, switched yeah. into manual mode, and therefore all technology is bad. Uh, well, what what was his argument there? He, I don't think he turned to all tech. Well, no, no, that's what he was ranting to write about. Yeah, he went into a very all technology is bad scenario, which was sprung from the fact that he got if dyslexia from a car accident that he was in. I think if I were to go ahead and try to fill in the blank here, I would guess that the fuller stances that he's taking here is that pushing our ability to decide and those moral judgments onto machines is a wrong course of action, because that seems to be what the text of the story is, at least in this moment, and we can go ahead and parallel that to the car because the car had a moral decision pushed onto it, and it had to make it, where humans maybe should have been making it themselves. And the person who wrote the program for the car went, wait a second, this is my fault, I made it, and I engineered this scenario. Okay, before you get too far in, because... Yeah. <laughs> if you no, that's, going, no, that's it, I was I'd done. Say, if you have going, I'd have too much to respond to, or do it right out the brain. God, I'm already losing the first thing. Um, god damn it. Now I'll respond to the last thing. I'll go backwards if I can remember. My memory is shit. Um, don't uh, have the, machines make moral decisions for you. There you go. Yeah, yeah, but um, 
Well, the first thing that comes to mind there is that the car didn't uh, make a moral decision. It veered off course and was going to hit a girl on a sidewalk. Right, it was going to make that decision. No, well, I'm saying is that the car wasn't, like, the car wasn't presented with the trolley problem that we got later on. The car didn't make a decision. The car veered off course and was going to hit somebody, and they had to take me out of the car. Because someone, like, came into, like, the opposite lane, which was incredibly dangerous and dumb. I don't remember that. I remember this the car veering off course. Yeah, that that was that was the circumstance of which it happened. So it was either hit the car coming oncoming or hit the girl. Anyway, also or hit the, the, light post. the girl who made the programming who turned it later out to be um Green's dad's wife. So I can't uh-huh. remember her names. Yeah, she just decided, Oh my god, my programming is bad because the car tried to make a choice on its own. Uh, and therefore the entire project should be scrapped, was also what I regard a bad choice on her part, because literally, just spend more time. Figure out the problems. Reprogram it. This entire real-life organization is right now solving these problems. Well, no, no, it do- it doesn't solve the problem. It's It's programmers' guilt by creation, is what it is. I made a thing, and that thing went on to do this thing. That is my responsibility as a programmer, as a computer scientist who uh, had to take at least a couple ethics classes. I am not devoid of the responsibility of the thing that I create. So if my creation kills somebody, that is my fault. Right, I'm saying it has nothing to do with this, though. I'm not saying it has nothing to do... Sorry, I'm... I'm (laughs) I'm exploding in a hyperbolic... Our feelings that I could have. <laughs> well, here's the thing, Griffin, is that I've also done programming that has ruined people's computers before. Because <laughs> I'm not a good programmer, and if things take too long to load, you get memory leaks and shit like that, which have affected people before. I'm just saying mm-hmm. that I understand the position you're coming from, and uh, are, I guess, extrapolating to what this character here is feeling. At the same time, I feel like it is a it is a dumb position. <laughs> yeah, yes, I have... Because they only had the one car, by the way. That was clearly the test vehicle for this whole thing. But they only had the one thing, and literally, spend more time. Just spend more time and work out the bugs. And if your bug is, I can either hit this car and kill my passengers or hit somebody on the street, and my problem is I don't want my cars to kill anybody... I don't know, maybe work on the brakes a little bit more, then. (laughs) Well, uh, there's two parts to that. The first is that reality is messy, and you don't always get that. Uh, The second part is, uh, geez, what I was saying, it's not a bug, it's a feature. All right? Um, It's not that the car is going to choose to kill one person or another. It was... Dang, man, I... I had this worded great, and then I immediately forgot it's about it. It's choosing to divert into a way that won't <laughs> kill its passengers, and in the process of doing so, will kill somebody else. I mean, I recognize that it's not choosing to kill somebody. The car isn't like, <laughs> well, I can't kill the people that right. made me. The, I the car kill isn't malfunctioning else. here. The car has a dilemma and needs to solve that dilemma in the moment. Like any other actor would have to also solve that dilemma. That's what I'm saying, is that the clearly the problem here is that the car couldn't stop moving forwards, otherwise it was going to hit the car that had jerked out in front of it, so it diverted to the side, and by diverting to the side, would have hit a person. That's why I said, work on the brakes, obviously. Mm-hmm. If that your, your problem <laughs> isn't that the car is making bad decisions, it's that the, the uh, decisions available to it weren't stopped. It was so clearly. You just need to work on the viability of the vehicle that you put right. your system into, and not. I, I, I think I got it again. The car is the parallel to the Kane system, right? Where it's predicting things and trying to make those decisions, and so was the car. That's that's the parallel that we have here. That's the text of the story we're looking at, right? We're supposed to think of these two objects as the same. Unfortunately, I now remembered my first point. That I was trying to remember that I had yeah. to, I backtracked to the car because of the last thing you said. My first yeah, yeah. point had to do with the Kane system and something you said at the very start. Now I can't remember, but pointedly I remember the entire point was that the girl is in the system now, so it's not a yes. computer making decisions. It's a a person's consciousness, I guess, making a decision. 
Right, a, a person as an object is technically what other people perceive it to be right now, and we're going to find out in the text what it actually is or could be. Except actually, when you think about it, the person, the consciousness in the machine, also is not making choices, it's calling people. Right, yeah, the, the person in the machine who could be an object or an echo of that person is having a panic attack making these choices and phones for help. The entire is... point of having them in there is already <laughs> being, you know, subversed well, because it's not actually doing the thing it was supposed to do. Well, like they said, it works 99% of the time, or, or 90%, or I forget what like they quoted earlier, but it works most of the time, and it works great, and then in some situations, it's too much, and it doesn't work. Well, pointedly, the only <clears throat> situations where it has to have made a call or something like that has been when the lives of people that she knows are in play. Because, pointedly... Episode one. Oh yeah, may maybe that could be. A we part go back of it to too, no. We like go back calls. to episode one, where mm -hmm. Green is pointing out to us the audience, and for some reason, I guess in the conversation he was having the researcher who made the system. Now that we know, I don't know why he was telling her how it works, but <laughs> to, and, and so doing tells us how it works. We have a scenario where a car accident is about to happen, and he's telling us how Sarg is going to be has have people on the scene before it happens. Mm -hmm. so that they can be first responded to. That could be a potentially deadly scenario, but she is actively uh, handling that without a problem. It's only, mm -hmm. again, when her friends, her family members, are put into these scenarios that she makes active calls, like the tornado. So, like, we still don't know how terrorist artist guy is creating tornadoes, but I, I don't also... think he did. I think, given the new context, nobody created the tornado. The tornado was literally just a freak accident. <laughs> And like you said, it involved all of her friends. Well, actually, I don't know. That is, I guess some of them would have been there. My, I was just thinking out loud now here that her friends were only there because she called them there. So she had to have been friends with people that were, yeah, I guess. Her teacher and her teacher's daughter were both there. Right, she could have yeah. known those people as well. In case. Well, she Actually, yeah, she, she did. saved one of them, didn't she? Well, I don't know if she saved them, but she was. Remember, she was uh, the teacher was on the panel to save the school because of a conversation that they had in the past. Oh yeah, the the daughter was there. She was the person that she saved specifically and died in the building for. Uh, the daughter and was that girl was a shut in because of her trauma from that moment. I was gonna say the daughter wasn't there at the island until after everybody got called in because remember her dad was there and the dad was disappointed that he didn't see the daughter there. But then the daughter. Oh right, up. She, she was just going to be there. She wasn't there at like the very moment. But you, that it's predictive. It's like oh these things are going to happen. Well. Well, no, even then, things. she only showed up because of pictures that were taken after the other three got called in. So it's like, <laughs> she only showed up as a result of the other three being called in. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, shrug. Um, what else do we need to cover for this episode? Well, what? I still think the terrorist guy's insane. You think he's not, but I still think he is. <laughs> I still think I would, the... I would be so sad if there's just a character in this show that goes, I'm just doing it for no reason. <laughs> I'm not saying he's not doing it for no reason. I'm saying that his reason is so far-fetched to me as to be insane. Right. Uh, so I guess we just... It is his moment to act next, and he has told us what his plan is. He's going to take it down, so I guess that's what we're... Yeah, the gonna go Golden see. City, he calls yeah. it. Yeah. There we go. Which, uh, by the way, I want to point out, uh, yeah. when I was going back and retitling the episodes to the titles that they have, one of the episodes was called Silver City, so I guess the 24th Ward is the Silver City, and the Tower is the Golden City? I don't really, I don't really I, know. I guess they upgraded it. Uh... Well, no, you, you've seen it uh, towering <laughs> Texas up. Texas Platinum City. Yeah, you, yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Up. Yeah, so I guess they consider that whole building the Golden City or something. Right, and I guess it like fits a bit with the metaphor of like tearing down the old city to make way for like their new fully planned thing, which is what they've been doing the entire series. Well, I mean, I don't know because those are outside uh, developers. Remember, those outside uh, developers. I think they're there in. for a reason. Well, I just mean the outside developers wanted in. They were outside of the twenty fourth mm -hmm. ward 
for when the 24th Ward uh, gets remanded from uh, American yeah. territory to Japanese territory. Yep, yep. God, we know All so right. much more about this show than we do Gundam. <laughs> weird. It is weird. It's like, oh man, I haven't watched this in two weeks. Let me discuss to you the metaphysics of everything that's happened so far. <laughs> we understand this we're, show we're, so much more. We've gone on hour-long rants about the philosophy of what's happening here. I, I, it's hard to forget that, I think. Yeah, yeah. All these episodes tend to be hour-long ones versus the right. Gundam, which is, alright, let me tell you everything I hated. Speaking of making this episode an hour long, let's go ahead and watch the actual episode. I was about to say, like, was that a dramatic reenactment or was that news? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sounds like most reenactment shows. These are just TV shows. It's it's the Ozymandias moment. You like have 20 TVs up, you're watching every channel, and you're getting the mood of everything. わからない人理解し合うってことができないんですかこんな… <laughs> ボインガーチャンプ。ワンデーアフターダッシュしてたんだ。わざわざコルヌコピアの展望台に設置されている。あ、ちょ、ちょ、キャッチダッティゲッター。あ、ディライ、ノー、アイディンス。カルトリガワ
So he's figuring out the thing that we've been talking about the whole time. Yeah, there we go. He's, he's got the text of the show. Five days later. The speed of events is really racking up now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's pretty appropriate. Is it? Because I remember, he was also the guy who was unwittingly walking onto a cruise ship with explosives, so... Mm -hmm. His own life was threatened as well. Oh, right. I guess he was also responsible for burning down the school, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, very interesting. <laughs> We're on the same boat that I rigged to explode. Hacking democracy. I didn't even recognize him there for a minute. <laughs> さん<笑> So they're going to do the thing that they're accusing the other side of being guilty of in order to beat the other side to not make the thing that they want to make. <laughs> I love that line. I know what's happened overseas. They're literally just directly referencing everything that's happened over here. <laughs> well, I thought it would be a reference to uh, the China moral system thing program. Oh, no, no. They're just literally talking about Facebook rigging elections. <laughs> ミスターハワードのコネクションで圧力がかけられるはず。そこまでするのは。ハワードに借りを作るのは後々を考えると得策ではないな。なるほど。では、ハザードキャストの力を再現に利用してみましょう。<笑><笑> It is just America. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to accuse them of crimes. A lot of them are guilty of crimes already. Before the scenario. Uh, I don't know that evicting them is a good look, though. <laughs> oh, man, we're laughing man in this. This is where I, by the way, when I cut ahead to see if this was a flashback episode, this is what I saw. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. I instantly knew and stopped. Oh, wow, we just jumped 16 days in the future. Not a lot else is going on. <laughs> we just got a flashback of all that shit that's going on. I, I guess they do have to, like, build up some time for people to, like, get angry about stuff. Set up the scene, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, remember, the vote happens also, I guess, at the same time that we transfer back to Japanese province. 
行ってくれ Always jumping into danger. But yeah, no, again, that both sides are also guilty of doing something to affect this. It's also a strange balance. Hey, there we go. Good line right there. What, the law to not vandalize property is screwed up? <laughs> I'm sorry, I also agree you that... You can't disobey the law. The law's screwed up, though. The law's not... It, it's vandalization is the law that they're referring to right now. I do not like this. Lure them right into it. There's a trap, yeah. God, I really feel like the situation here is going to be one where I'm only going to be able to agree with Blue. Oh wow, those guys actually have lives outside of their thuckery job. <laughs> well, again, they report to their boss, who's now on Do Red's side, so this angry mob is your, your side of things right now. They also just said the text again, you can't trust the machine with justice. Everyone is actually fully informed what's going on. They're not, though. They're actually not. They're being influenced by the 3%. They're influencing the 3% turnover. Which is really what your guys were just talking about. Your guys are Facebook right now. God, I liked her, too. She was such a nice girl, until your people came along. <laughs> until she decided to have an opinion, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Until she decided to have an opinion, which is... Unlike Blue. To join a mob, to be... <laughs> which is to join a mob, to antagonize the cops, into a situation in which the cops are going to get killed by an angry mob. Yeah, I do not appreciate that point of view. Pyoinkara? <laughs> もしもし。ダメ。この状態で止まったら。またです。異常警報の緊急名の件はどうなって主任。その件は現在対応中だ。今少しだけ時間をくれ。すまないが私は緊急で病院に向かわなければならん。集団がテロリスト。バカな。そ
使用上の行き詰まりを起こしていましたカナエ様が設計したオリジナルのシステムには演算装置として人間の脳が必要だったのです人道に反するという理由でカナエ様はこの研究を中止なさいましたしかし私とゴーリ様はこの研究に未来をかけざるを得なくなったのですあカナエ先生がミスターカナエあんな死に方をしていい方ではなかった研究を再開しましたが結局代替物を生み出すことはできませんでした人間の脳の代わり、yep, そうですしかし1年半前とんざ仕掛けていた研究に転機が訪れました宝小学校火災事件といえばお分かりになりますかえそれって<笑>ゴーリ様はアスミ様をシステムのコアに移植しろと私に命じられましたそれじゃこのシステムの中に。I do have to wonder how much this computer scientist knows about biology for hooking somebody up into a system, but I guess they did develop a system for specifically that. I mean, they have an entire building of people. One was human. Yeah, I guess, I guess she has a team, so they could have a specialist. Gori Samoa, Niju Yonko no Tamini, he jindo taking a system of Mochiru Koto, Ketsdan Saremashta. Demo, Sonna no Amaridaro. Ishoko Keta Kanai system. まるで天使の庇護を受けたように順調に機能しました。Exactly、あなたたちにアスミ様からの電話が届いたあの日まで。あの電話。コウキ様、シュータさん、ランさんの三人にのみ助けを求めたという事実に私は嫌な予感がしたのです。アスミ様は間違いなく生物学的に死亡しています。しかし有機能と機械をつなげ電気を流すことで。再び意識が生まれたとするならば。Hey, here we go. Mind body problem. このシステムの中で生き返った。しかし、詳細を調べるまでは、バグとして潰されるわけにはいかなかった。だから私は、カナエシステムへのハッキングを自演しました。それじゃ、カルナデスを名乗ったのは。端的に言えば時間稼ぎです。私はコルヌコピアにマッピングセンサーを設置し、街全体を覆う微弱な電波を観測しました。普段はアスミ様の意識はシステムの全体に偏在し存在が認知できませんしかしハザードキャストに特定の人物アスミ様の知人が関わる時にだけ散らばった意識が焦点を結ぶことが分かりましたアスミがアスミに戻る瞬間に俺たちに助けを求めていたビジョンはアスミ様の悲鳴ですカナエシステムの一部になり最悪の未来を避けるため24区に起こりうる悪夢を見続けるそのいずれかを現実にしなければならないと知った時一人で抱えることに耐えきれずアスミ様は目を覚ましあなたたちにトロッコ問題で助けを呼ぶあいつは、yeah, つらくて She's dead but in agony and pain 助けを呼ぶたびに家内システムにはバグが蓄積していっていますこのままではアスミ様の意識が暴走しかねないと危惧した私は彼女の意識を永遠に眠らせることにしました観測した計測データがあれば彼女が悪夢で目を覚ます寸前に意識を強制的に拡散させる理論上そのようなプログラムを作ることが可能ですそれって結局悪夢にうなされ続ける状態に変わりないんじゃないですかアスミにそんな苦痛を与え続けるつもりなんですか他に手段がないのごめんなさい。笑ってください。アスミさんが亡くなったと。<笑>デジタルの残留思念だと分かっていても、その存在を消したくないんですよ。私は。私は、このままではカナエ様にどう顔向けすればよいか。スラガーさん。I said, I think the reason that she would mark him as a, a terrorist is because she herself also doesn't want to die. 自分はそれだけの罪を犯した。アスミ様に重荷を背負わせてしまった。死は私にとってふさわしい罰でした。でも、死ぬはずだった私は、今ここに生きている。あなたが私を救ったからです。いや、I guess realizing that you're literally torturing someone post death forever in their own hell in a machine you created is, is kind of a, a down point in your life, I suppose. でもあなたからは、カナエ様。アスミ様と同じ思想を感じます二人と
同じ周太さんあなたならアスミ様をどのように救いますかだだおじゅう師匠これが事実なら家内システム全力ブロークン決定じゃんアスミ俺がお前を眠らせ続けてやる悪夢ではないたゆたうゆりかごを準備するお前が苦しむ必要なんてないんだ俺がアスミを救う Wasn't that a wild ride? <laughs> So yeah, no, uh, we're left with at the end. It looks like Red is going to try and destroy the system. Green is going to try and keep the system going, but um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, not monitor. Well, I guess we'll just use monitor now because I can't remember the word. He's going to keep trying to monitor the system so that he can stay on top of any scenario which uh, Kane herself would wake up in nightmare state, which is to say, take care of any situation wherein one of the three of them is going to be in a problem. So mm -hmm. we have Uh, stasis, we have destruction, and then we have the middle blue who doesn't know how he's gonna be the hero here. Right, maybe he has some some new thing. Uh, there is a third solution here, or at least a third solution I thought of as soon as we were starting to talk about it. I decided I, I wouldn't mention because I'm like, no, no, no way. Well, uh, all three of them could die. If solution. all three of them die, then the system works perfectly. She never has nightmares about anything bad happening to them. <laughs> They just all die. Well, it's not. It's not true. It's not. Wouldn't be it's, three of them. It would be more than three because it'd be everybody it would, that she had contact with before. Right. Everyone in the neighborhood who she knows and everyone who matters will have to die. All the main characters die. The story ends. <laughs> it still happen. That it the, is. It is possible, and you know, given like sixty years, it it'll happen anyway. Well, I mean, the mobs that your guys have uh, caused to form might incidentally just end up accidentally killing the people that she cares about, so it's entirely possible. Oh man, if you really think about it, your whole do red faction is torturing this girl. Uh oh, you mean by constantly being involved in things and trying to do things? They are uh doing things which is causing things to happen to people she knows, which is then giving causing those torturous nightmares. Which Which is perfect, and I'm glad you brought it up because it does bring to my mind the difference between justice and peace. And that is sort of a little bit of what we're looking at here in the tr decision the plea, the, uh, I was about to say the players are facing, though no, the main characters are facing here, where they could easily create a piece of the situation where they definitely stop the active violence or stuff. But don't come to a just solution about anything for either the people on the street or for their friend who's trapped in a jar. They could just pave over the problem and nothing else seems to happen anymore. They stop getting the errors from the system, right? Or they could choose to pursue justice and try to fully solve these problems and bring people to, well, a better situation overall. A problem you're not having isn't a problem, Griff. <laughs> uh, only because the people in power told you it's not one. Uh. No, if you're not having it either, it's not a problem. I'm saying that's the uh, stasis side. Green, if I continue to prevent the problems from happening, which are causing my dead sister to be in pain, then she will no longer be in pain. I mean, you're, that's what you're saying with paving it over and ignoring it. Uh, in that right. in that specific, they also respect. have like the programmatic solution of just like, well, we could just automatically veto her and and just keep her in there forever, <laughs> which I think was something they said. No, I don't remember vetoing her. I mean, that's why that's why Green is doing what he's doing, in that you can't just veto her. You have to uh, you have to take care of the situations that are mm -hmm. causing her pain, rather than letting her just wander into the scenario where she's going to discover them. Right, right, right. Oh, no, no, it was what's-her-name. Um, sorry, now I'm going to remember the, the shit name that your, your red guy here, Titigawa. Mm -hmm. uh, she was going to try and veto her, which is what she was doing in the moments where she almost died. Right, right. That That's the system she was setting up, and we... Okay, cool. So that that's, been the worst... that's off the table now. Though. Yeah, that would have been worst case for her. What Green right. is doing is a more active... And and she's already expressed system. that what she was doing, uh, 
uh, was not good, and she didn't like it. So uh, I'm glad she is at least uh, fully aware of that. And is like, uh, yeah, I basically deserve to die. I'm just glad you saved me. <laughs> so that so, was good. Um, when it comes to what's happening in 24th Ward, I am both. <sighs> I uh, I think I'm like 60 percent against your mobs, uh -huh. and like 40 percent understanding them. <laughs> I, I, so if we can just change the ten percent of you, it'll cause a cascade effect. <laughs> no, then I'll just be a neutral <laughs> son of a bitch who doesn't care about anything. I think I think you'll find what we found in the last couple of years is that neutrality is the worst of all positions. That is right. Uh, neutrality and centrism merely supports the status quo. It is it is an active position. See, um, it's not merely not making. When it comes to your mobs, what specifically keeps me on the sixty sixty percent of disliking them is okay. Go for it. Well, no, it's just that I'm trying to. There's so many factors in play here that I don't know where to start. That makes sense. Take, you, take, because we take have the, the one that matters most to you. Then, well, see, my problem is I want to keep. I want to backtrace everything to the point. Mm -hmm. We have the scene there where that girl whose dad died. Uh, is vandalizing a cop car. And the cops are chasing her down, saying, you can't do this. This is illegal. And she says, well, the law is wrong. And you're agreeing with it, by the way. It's like, oh, God, I hate this already. She... The law is wrong. <laughs> I, I think we got lost in that moment a little no, bit. No, no, that, that was the scene. That, that, well, that was what she was saying, that she says, the law is wrong. And I don't agree that vandal <laughs> laws against vandalization <laughs> are wrong. Not what she she's not saying... The law of vandalism is a wrong law. She's saying the law as a broad subject, i.e. the thing being imposed upon her by these people, is wrong overall because of all the things that they're doing. That not does that not people shouldn't spray paint things. That does, <laughs> that does not, not trace to me at all. That does not trace to me at all because when you're getting yelled at by a cop that what you just did is wrong and they're saying you just committed vandalism, vandalism against the law... When you shout back, well, the law is wrong. I don't think she, she's launching into a, a a broad philosophical argument about what the law means and everything. I think she's disagreeing that vandalism is wrong. Anyway, well, no, just let's just, just <laughs> hold it ahead, in, continue. Griff, because that's not that's not the basis of why I'm saying it. Well, it is and it isn't. It, continue, to continue. the point being that a mob is now formed based on the three percent margin, by the way, which which is your Facebook argument. Uh, not your argument, but I'm saying you equated it to Facebook. Make Facebook parallel to the real world. Continue. Right, right. Well, I, I saw it more again toward the moral uh, code system that the Chinese authority uh, infl not inflicted. I guess they technically did inflict it, but they, they uh, put I, upon I'll just system. go ahead and stop real quick and make the comment, those are the same things. I mean, they are, Mind they well, aren't, they, they, they operate in different ways, and one is more of a government <laughs> authority, and one's a private they... sector affecting a, a government authority. I, I would say that the systems that are connected between capitalism and government are the same, and the creation of it serves the same purpose, and they do the same things to people. Right, but the Chinese version isn't capitalist, it's a, uh, authoritarianism. They, they are more so than people continually say they are. Anyway, continue. Uh, but, but yeah, we, no, we that's don't what need I'm to saying. talk about China today. <laughs> I don't see why not, they can't affect us at all. <laughs> Uh, I mean, at worst, we just I, won't I see mean, any like, Chinese viewership. Well, what I mean is, like, you were making a point. Go ahead and continue making the point before we go off well, here's on the a problem. tangent forever. My problem is that I've tangented three times now, and I'm already losing it. The fact that a mob had formed due to this inherent thing, and now they're attacking cops on the street, is not a situation that I would like to see. And additionally... I mean, it, it falls back to your justice versus peace. I fall peace side, you fall justice side, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. God, no, again, it's just all these elements of things that worked uh, against one another. It's so many elements at play here. Because I was also going to bring up the fact that the government authority uh, is also talking about evicting the criminals so the criminals can't get a vote. And you were saying that they were just going to make them criminals, but no, they, they, uh, they have been setting up this entire time that they've considered a bunch of these people criminals. Uh, for various reasons, and that instead of just making it so they can't vote, they're going to evict them from the city to make sure, sorry, the ward to make sure they can't vote, which is also right. causing a bunch of uprising. And I don't agree with that aspect, which is also the 40% of me that says I, I understand because these people are being evicted from their homes, which is 
not right. But at yeah. the same time, I don't feel that. I can't. <laughs> Wishy, wishy washy. <laughs> It's okay. Things are complicated and decisions are hard. We Everybody understands that. I fall upon the peace side of the argument in that I would rather have peace than justice. Because peace can be molded into justice as it yeah. goes, right? The, the ways that we maintain peace can then also be made to fix the problems that caused the injustice in the first place. Without the destruction, the anger, the violence, the the things that we've seen throughout history that usually have to happen to overturn a tyranny or things like that, we can piece our way into into equality rather than destroy our way into equality. Right, and uh, so the anarchist position over here is the law is violence and there is no peace while there is a bunch of cops who are trying to force you to do things. Now, see, I think that goes against what we've said before. And there's before. no justice either. <laughs> I think that goes against what we said before, though, in that we were talking about that everybody so far has been acting with 100%, uh, I want to say genuinity, if that's not a word. They've been acting in a hundred percent best interest for everybody. They they have been they are informed of what's happening. They're making decisions. Uh, there's there's very little dramatic irony in this show because there's very little the characters don't themselves know. Right, but I mean that the, everyone has been acting in the best self interests of everybody without any any outward show of trying to, other than obviously the architects or. Uh, the people that are trying to take over the businesses yeah. and everything. Everyone is acting in good faith, good or faith. at least making their arguments in good faith. Good. There we go. Hey, that yeah, was, we found it. Yeah. Good. Everyone's been acting in good faith. And in an organized society, with everybody acting in good faith, there ha doesn't have to be uh, violence and uh, mob mentality and no justice, no peace acting. Well, well good that faith only... doesn't mean people don't have opposing views. It just means that they're being honest about themselves about what their views are. No, no, I understand that. I'm just saying that uh, they have uh, opposed, not opposing views. I'm saying that that just means that if we all understand that we're all acting in good faith, means that we don't have to come to blows or destroy anything about this because we can we can talk our way through with understanding of different viewpoints. Right. Uh, I I think we might be muddying it with like the concept of good faith as like I I am coming to you to have a discussion, which is is definitely part of like the the concept of like being honest about what your own argument is. Uh, I, I, I think that's just language there. I think that's just language. <laughs> Acting in good faith. Well, as an example Which, uh, of what I understand. I'm talking uh, about. It's... As an example of what I'm talking about. Acting in good faith, we wouldn't be kicking out all of these criminals from the city in order to improve our chances of winning a vote. That's not acting in good faith. That is... Okay, I think we're talking about two things. Uh, everybody having a good faith argument and acting in good faith might all be right. considered two things, but I'm merging them into one. The example of bad faith would be literally every time Green's father gets up on a podium and says something because he is he believes one thing and is presenting something to everyone else. I disagree with that. So he's not that. living his actual true argument. I disagree with that because we've both had a breakdown of his internal thought monologue and mm -hmm. Green himself has done a breakdown of what his father is doing when he gives a speech and both mm -hmm. have uh, projected a we believe that he's doing the best for what he can do and what he thinks is right. So right. When, every time he's up on a podium, I don't think that Green's dad is acting in bad faith because he also believes what he's doing is right and is doing what he believes is right, which are two different things, but are both acting in the right. Mm -hmm. It just happens to be that he's also acting in bad faith in that what he thinks is right is bad for people. <laughs> Right, what he thinks is right is bad for people, and then he lies to everyone else about it. He's he's actually the most consistent liar on this show. I mean, he ha he's only lied about... Even the criminals are pretty straightforward. He's only lied about the one thing. Everything else he's been completely honest about. Uh, he wasn't honest about uh, the data collection from the phones and the surveillance, which is what led to the situation in the first place. He had to make that whole announcement. He hasn't been honest about... Uh, 
the death of his daughter and what he's literally doing to her. The right death now. of his daughter was the one I was thinking about. He's been yeah, honest yeah. about the surveillance. Everyone knows about the surveillance. That's what uh, the, the not vote's on the about. phones, which was the one that got revealed. That one, I don't, I can't side with you one way or another on that one because we all had the previous discussion that um, they kept talking about. Was it the slums? They kept talking about how the slums weren't being surveilled because the cameras weren't there. But mm -hmm. everyone in the slums has a phone. So if they were surveilling everyone through their phones in the slums, they would have surveillance, but they don't. Yeah. So it, it is... I, I think they said it was experimental. It, it's been a minute, but yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's eh. I can't side with you one way or another on yeah. that because there's thing, too many elements there that don't make sense if it was true. Right, right. I, I feel he's going to be involved in more episodes here, and he needs to give a little bit more of himself into uh, the happenings, I think, is what's going to happen, right? Oh, he has to. He's the culminating point, because we even saw him having a discussion about, I guess Mr. Howard must be like the U.S. ambassador or something to this region, because mm -hmm. he's going to be coming into play within... They didn't want to make deals with Mr. Howard, they said. And there's oh, six right. Days. So, yeah, he's coming in, and he's going to finish this off, and then the whole thing is going to be like, all right, we've done the transition. Well, yeah, six days from now yeah. is the transition to becoming a part of Japan, mm -hmm. which means the laws are going to change. I guess there really can't be a second season of the show, can there? <laughs> I mean, if they decide to save Kane by not taking her out, because the thing is that Green is acting in stasis to keep Kane alive and in peace. Red appears to be acting towards destruction that Kane is only going to suffer, so let her be dead, mm -hmm. rather than suffer. And Blue is trying to find a how-to-save-everyone route, which means, I guess, right. I don't know if Blue's saving everyone route involves just Kane being dead or Kane being alive still, so... Right. Blue is Blue is audience avatar. Blue is the person trying to navigate these problems still. Uh, and he's come across the hardest problem probably to solve. So, good luck to him. <laughs> I mean, I've uh, despite my favorite character being on Red's side and getting molested this episode. Uh, yeah, almost shanked. Well, they were doing more than that. You saw where the knife was going. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I consistently fall on green side, and you're, as you pointed out, anarchist, you're on red side. Yeah. <laughs> so, there we have it. Uh, always a lot to talk about with this show. It's always great. It's always got fun things to say, and it really does put these... Uh, problems out, fully discusses them, and I think the only way to end this whole thing off, this discussion for today, is Facebook is bad. Get rid of Facebook. Uh, I do post I a bunch of our videos on there, today. though, so, I mean, maybe watch it for the videos. Uh, okay, watch our videos on Facebook specifically. Nobody else's. Close Facebook afterwards. Speak to nobody on Facebook. I mean, Facebook. preferably <laughs> watch our videos on YouTube. I just put it on uh, Facebook so you know that we put them out. They're like links to YouTube. Just I'm just saying <laughs> that social media is both a curse and a blessing, and I don't know what the blessings are just yet, but the curse is there. <laughs> oh, we are so cursed. This is this is the curse timeline. That's what it is. I don't use social media <laughs> other than telling people about the stuff I put out. So. Oh, same or, here. Same or, you know, here. to vent for myself, vent to myself, because no one watches my social media. So. Join us against social media. <laughs> I think the only way this show would work out better is if, like, yeah. you were an anarchist and I was a Republican. Or something. Oh, God, no. If if that was so, it would just be arguing all the time. We would never end. Right, right, right. I just mean to get the I've full... I've seen it before. To get the full amount of discussion. Like, I can't think of... Or I guess maybe if you were an anarchist and I'm a communist. But, I don't know. <laughs> I guess, sort of, I fall on that side of the leftist spectrum that I would fall more towards communism than any... than anarchy, so... Like you said, I already said I prefer peace to justice, so we've gone there. You're right. But we're two white guys on the internet, so. Yup, we sure are. And speaking of, uh, this has been two white guys on the internet. Uh, this has been another new name for our show. <laughs> new name for our show, Stone Face Reaction. I'm Griffin, that's Theta, and we'll catch you all next time, everybody. See ya. 
Hey everybody, thanks for watching another Stoneface Reactions. If you have an idea of another video we could go ahead and watch, go ahead and put it in the comments down below and we'll add it to the wheel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you thought about this video and what parts you liked. And until then, we'll see you next time. Is this too goofy?